morning and welcome to Church of the Hills in Evergreen, Colorado. I am Reverend Susan Boucher and we are delighted to have you with us here this morning. Church of the Hills is part of the Presbyterian Church USA denomination. And as Presbyterians, we believe in the love of our Blessed Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and in the amazing gift of God's grace. This morning, we, I will share with you two announcements. The first is that there is a bulletin on our website. So if you would like to follow along in the worship service, the bulletin is there. The second is that we are celebrating communion today. So I invite you to have on hand a grain of the field, fruit of the vine, and we will come together through the gift of the Holy Spirit to become uh, one, to celebrate as one people the tremendous sacrament that Jesus has given us. I invite you to please bow as I lead us in our opening prayer. Good Shepherd, you call us by name, and we know your voice. Open the gate for us, that we may come and go freely, have life, and have it abundantly. And the people of God say, Amen. Enjoy, I invite you to join Elder Sue Brown in the call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Good Shepherd, you call us by name and we know your voice. Open the gate for us that, that we, we may come, come and go freely, have life and, and have it abundantly. abundantly. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is the gate. It is through him that our sin is forgiven, that we have the promise of everlasting life. And it is through his waters, the waters of baptism, that we are forgiven. When we are baptized, we are baptized into the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, purifying waters. God's grace is so tremendous and abundant through Christ. And this is that moment for us to recognize that we have messed it up. We have sinned in this past week. We've walked away from God. We have walked away from others. We have caverns of brokenness between us and God and one another. 
It's time to take that to the Lord and know, know that we'll be forgiven. Know that we've been brought through these wonderful cleansing waters and that when we return to God with repentant hearts, that we are greeted with grace. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy One, we confess to you and to one another that we have not always followed Christ's example. We have gone astray. Lead us back into your fold and guard our souls in Jesus' name. And in this time of silence, we ask for you to forgive our sins. Help us to live in your light and walk in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the people of God say, Amen. My beloved, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you are forgiven. You and me, we are are forgiven. Be at peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Share that peace with those in your home, and if you're alone, call someone and greet them with the peace of Christ. And join our voices singing the song, Lamb of God. Join me in the prayer for illumination. Loving God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will strengthen us to be devoted to the teachings of your word, that through it we may hear your voice and follow it into eternal life. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of John. And one way to think of John is in the author, the disciple, that encourages us, Jesus' disciples, Jesus' followers, even 2,000 years later, to listen, to listen to Jesus. His 
gospel begins with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so with hearts anticipating hearing Jesus' words, I share with you chapter 10, verses 10, or verses 1 through 11. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and abandoned. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of a stranger's. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. Who are you following? What voice are you following during this COVID-19 era? There are quite a few options. We can follow the leadership of our civic leaders. We can let our opinions and minds be bent toward the news reports. We can follow scientists, the scientists as they begin to share their reports as to how the pandemic will move across the country within the next month, year. We should be following the voice of our own physicians. There are others within the medical community that have their perspective. What voice are you listening to? Who are you following? The, my uh, inbox email in inbox has literally exploded with advice. It's coming from everywhere. I like to stay up on what the Center of Disease Control is saying. Recently, I was invited to a piece from FEMA. And then there are the ecclesiastical higher you know, uh, organizations or uh, leaders that are inviting me to a variety of things. They're all good and they're all solid, but there is really only so much information and so many voices that you can listen to or have dialogue or with whom to have dialogue within a week. Whose voice are we following? I love how the word of the Lord works. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through uh, 11, speaks, speaks to who we are called to follow. And Christians throughout the centuries, Christians in the 21st century, were called to follow Jesus. And today's scripture was so clear that Jesus is the gate. It is through him that we are forgiven of our sins. It is through him that we know the gift of everlasting life. It is through him that we are able to have a living, dynamic relationship with our triune God. And it begins in those waters of baptism. The old life is gone and the new life has begun 
in Christ. Follow him. We read down into verse 11 because there also he speaks of himself as a shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Now, I, I hate to break it to you. In both of these examples, we're the sheep. It's not an image that we like to think of ourselves as in this 21st century. I think very few of us understand uh, actually how smart a sheep can be, but that literally is another sermon. <laughs> we are the sheep called to follow Jesus. He has opened the gate for us to abundant and beautiful life. He is the shepherd that we are to follow. The one thing about sheep is that they know who their shepherd is. They can recognize the shepherd's voice and they know to trust the shepherd. See, if that shepherd doesn't have any trust, there is no way that the sheep will follow. And Jesus is, in the 21st century, the Christian's shepherd. And we are called to follow him. Now, granted, it takes a while to learn how to follow Jesus, how to hear his voice. I remember going to someone, a very faithful woman, when I was 17 and, and, and asking that question, like, how do I know when it's my thought or how do I know when I'm following Jesus? And her answer was so clear. The more you follow him, the clearer his voice becomes. And I believe that those of you who have been following Jesus long enough know that as an absolute truth. The longer we follow Jesus, the clearer his voice becomes. And Jesus says if we are to follow him, we will have abundant Abundant life. Now, following Jesus, as I said, there's a walking through or living through, being reborn through the waters of baptism. But it also includes coming to the table where we are prepared, where we are sustained in the journey. Two incredible sacraments available provided, laid out before Christians in the 21st century. Other ways in which we can learn Jesus' voice, uh, not just through the sacraments, but studying the Word of God, interpreting that in the community of faith. Tending Bible studies, opening our hearts and our minds to the way in which the Lord will lead us. You know, Psalm 23 also has this imagery about following the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord leads me to lie down in green pastures, to still waters. Dallas Willard, in his book, Life Without Lack, he talks about this imagery of how we are led to lie down in green pastures. And he picks up this idea that if a sheep is really hungry, if a sheep is aching and starving, they will not lie down in a green pasture. They would eat in a green pasture. What Willard picks up on is that the Lord is our shepherd, I shall not want, is saying that God provides, and God's provision sustains us. God's provision sustains us. So we, like a sheep that is fully provided for, will lie down in a green pasture. You know, the imagery of still waters, well, that's pretty easy for us to connect with. Any hiker or camper, you, you know, you know that you 
don't necessarily want to go to the raging waters to reach your hand in to fill your water bottle. You look for still waters. They need to be running. We know that. But still. Clean water where we are again sustained for the journey. So the Lord is our shepherd. God provides for us. And we will be going through these dark valleys. Well, okay, we're in one. And what happens in that dark valley? The Lord pre uh, prepares a table. Prepares a table in front of thine enemies. And what happens on that table? The cup overflows. God's provision is abundant in the dark valley. There is a, uh, there is a, um, sorry, I'm forgetting his name. I'm just going to step down and get it. Clinton McCann, who is at Eden Seminary, he has a very profound uh, interpretation that surely, on, on that piece in Psalm 23, that surely goodness, God's goodness and mercy will follow me all of my life. God's goodness and mercy shall follow me. Well, Professor McCann says, mm, maybe we should interpret that. Perhaps it's better interpreted as pursues me. Surely God's goodness and mercy pursues me. Pursues you. Oh my goodness. You weave together John 10 verses 1 through 11 with Psalm 23 and the imagery that unfolds is so powerful and profound. Jesus is our shepherd going ahead of us, leading us to green pastures of nutrients and beauty, to still waters of clarity, to preparing a table where the um, where the cup overflows and God's mercy and goodness pursue us as we follow Jesus. Wow. Christians in the 21st century, we, we are a blessed people. We can follow Jesus' voice. We can stay connected with one another through technology. We can still remember and celebrate all the sacraments that have sustained us in, in the past and will continue to sustain us into the future. And we can know that behind us, it's not a vacant, a void of darkness. It is God's goodness and mercy pursuing us. Oh, my beloved, my beloved, whose voice, whose voice will you listen to first? I pray it's Jesus. He's going to help us. He'll help us uh, tune out the voices that are not of his design and tune in. Tune in that those pieces, uh, those places in, uh, we are to follow. There will be a day when we will gather again in this sanctuary. We will dwell in this house again together. And we will do that as we follow Jesus' lead. And the people of God say, Amen. Let us join our voices together and sing. Sing to the Lord, remembering that the Lord does satisfy the hungry heart.
everyone, everyone who has continued to support and participate in the ministry of Church of the Hills. Your volunteer time is seen and recognized and we are profoundly grateful for all the work that you have been doing. I also want to thank those who have continued to support us financially with their tithes and their offerings. If you would like to be someone who participates in supporting the ministry here at Church of the Hills financially, then I invite you to please go to our website and you are welcome to mail in a check to the P.O. Box listed there. It's always important to thank God. To thank God for the way in which uh, we have responded to God's grace through the offering of our tithes and, well, our offerings. So please join me in prayer. Holy and generous God, you have anointed us and we are yours. Bless these tithes and offerings that they may become green pastures and still waters for any and all who need your comfort and restoration. And the people of God say, Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. We will, they will, Come from the east and the west and the north and south and gather at table in the kingdom of heaven. According to Luke, when the risen
risen Christ was at table with his disciples, he took bread. He blessed and he broke it, and then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. May we recognize the Lord as we share this feast with one another. Please join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. Shepherding God in a dangerous world, let us hear your voice and come and go through your great gate. May we, O oh Lord, lean in to the promises of our baptism, that we are baptized into the life and the death and the promise of resurrection in Jesus, our Lord. May we, O oh Lord, lean in to the new life of those running waters. O oh Lord, we have gathered together to remember your word, your truth, your truth that you lead your sheep to lie down in green pasture. Your truth that you lead your sheep to still water. Your truth that you, O oh Lord, lead us through the darkest of valleys. And as we walk through those valleys, you pursue us with goodness and mercy. Your truth, O oh Lord, that you have prepared a table for us, a table where we will gather today and we will gather in the future together. O oh God of grace, we praise you for your faithfulness to your people throughout all generations. You hear our cries. You answer prayers. You guide us according to your will, and in that we experience the depth and the breadth of your mercy and love. Thank you, Lord, for this feast. Thank you for the gift of the field and the fruit of the vine. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and fruit of the vine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ, and by your Spirit make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. And as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Strengthen us at the feast that you have prepared. Give us courage to plant seeds of hope so that all may know and experience your grace. We pray, O oh Lord, for our nation's leaders, our nation's scientists, our nation and our world's decision makers. We pray, O oh Lord, for each family as they decide when to step out and when to step in. We pray, O oh Lord, for your grace to be upon those that are staying in place or sheltering in place alone. They have Zoom and telephone calls and all sorts of ways to connect, but they are alone. So may you, O oh Lord, cloak them with the uh, sense of your peace in your presence. And Lord, we pray for those who are on the edge of dementia, not sure why their loved ones can't come visit, really feeling captive. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will be present with them. Be present with them every time they break bread and drink of a cup. Oh Lord, be present with them, so that they may know, O oh Lord, you are with them. We pray for those who have lost a loved one to coronavirus 19, and for those who have lost their loved ones to other diseases and ailments. May your grace prevail. May they find steadfast assurance in your promise of everlasting life. We pray for your wisdom uh, to be with those who are taking care of the sick. Continue to sustain, sustain them and strengthen them and, and lead them to the still waters when they need to rest. 
We're grateful, Lord, that you've given us a prayer, a prayer where we can unite our voices with one another, and we can unite our voices with those that have gone before us and those that shall follow, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And the people of God say, Amen. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you drink of it, do this in memory of me. Every time we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we are proclaiming the saving death of the risen Christ until he comes again in glory. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ, Pour it out for you. Amen. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the people of God say, Amen. And let us join our voices again, singing a blessing upon one another until we meet again. shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. And we are invited to 
follow our faithful Christ. The one who has laid down his life for us, the one that has risen for us, the one who sits at the right hand of God and prays for us, the one that has given us the sacraments to be sustained through the journey. My brothers and sisters in Christ, believe the good news of Jesus. He is with us and he is leading us. May the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And the people of God say, Hallelujah! Amen. <laughs>